So, storage. I love this. I'd love to have that in my lounge. What's that? The secret door down to my cellar. That'd be brilliant. Um, right. How complicated can storage be? Now, remember my original slide, which was that's SQL Server, that's Federations, that's Data Sync, and that's Roles. All of this is storage. There's a lot to it. Most of it, I, most of it, I believe, will be new to most people in the room. At least I hope so. Um, so what types of storage are there? There's blobs. Blobs are basically just a chunk of data. They can be simple. They can be block blobs. They can be page blobs. They can be drive blobs. You can have snapshots of blobs. You can put blobs through a content distribution network. And there is also issues about security and sharing of blobs. There are tables, which aren't SQL tables. They are just they are effectively a NoSQL table. There are queues, and there are, and to be aware of, there are partitions. You can't use them directly, but if you're aware of what a partition is, then you'll understand how to get the most out of storage. So, again, what are they? A blob is for something simple. It's basically just a file. It can be a text file. It can be whatever you want it to be. Um, it can be very large. Um, Drives are based on blobs, but this is what I was talking about earlier a little bit. This is basically a way of getting persistent storage for your roles. You have a drive which is mounted, which is mounted on, your, on your role, and then you can use that as persistent storage. You can actually have it mounted on multiple machines at once, but only one machine will ever have write access to it at one point in time. Tables, these are structured storage. Um, these are the cheap ones. So SQL, SQL Server, SQL Azure, is, ten, is, is at least $10 a month per gigabyte. Storage is 15 cents per gigabyte. It makes a lot of sense to get as much of your data out of your SQL as you possibly can before you, before you migrate to the cloud. If you've got lookup data, you don't put it in SQL. You put it in, you put it in table storage. That's where you put that kind of stuff. Then you have queues which are basically first in, first out, pretty standard. There is one gotcha, and I'll go into it in detail. So all of your data is actually up there on the web. It's most of it, with one exception. So if you go to the URL, you can find your blob. In fact, the blobs, that's where Labs, Redgate Labs, stores its, stores its actual um, executables. They're just, stored in a, they're just stored in a blob, and when you download, I just point you straight to that URL, and that's what you download. You have tables again, table.core, queue.core. So most of the storage facilities are all there on the web, web accessible. In fact, most of, the, most of the API can be done via REST, if that's the way you're inclined. There's also, when you install the, develop, the SDK, the development fabric, there is actually a local kind of storage, which makes use of SQL Express. Um, and that, allow, that emulates a lot of the storage facilities of Azure. So you can actually test your applications without worrying about the data transfer and the data usage. And you actually make sure you get everything right before you actually start using your live storage account. It actually works quite well. Um, there are some differences, apparently. I didn't spot any. Um, but then Labs is quite simple. Um, if you go there, you can see some of those differences. It's great. I mean, it's, it's a really good, really good way of just getting familiar with it without actually incurring the costs. Then there's the content distribution network. Um, this is what I was saying about if you want to make sure that all your images, all your video files or whatever are accessible as the fastest possible way throughout the world, you put them on the CDN. You pay a certain amount. It's not actually that much. It's surprisingly little. So if I'm on slide 39, oops, wrong one, if I go there, so your storage, you're paying one cent per 10,000 storage transactions. What happens in the content delivery network is, so say you've got your, your blob uploaded here, so your file is up here, up in the EU, and then somebody wants to get at it from Japan, let's say. So 
they put a request into the cloud to say, I want to get it from redgate.vo. That uses dynamic DNS to actually resolve it to the, local, to the, to the most local of the 20 content distribution centers. It then checks to see if the file's there. If it isn't, it goes to the main center where it is, downloads it, caches it in place, and then returns it to the first user. So when your second user comes along, they can get the local, the local copy. So what you're paying for is the distribution to the centers, and that's about it, really. So it's quite good if you, if you do have that application that needs to be worldwide. Yeah?